awesome. Hey guys, I'm Tessa with Mama's Geeky. Thank you so much for your time today. Our pleasure. Listen, the first film, my favorite animated film of all time, until <laughs> now, uh, I've got to ask you, like, how did you guys raise the bar here and what was the challenges of that? Uh, we had a lot of help. I would say, first of all, thank you to all of you guys. Uh, um, the, the, this, this particular blogosphere has been a huge supporters of our, uh, our work since Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. <laughs> so thank you guys. And, and particularly, Tessa, I think, we, I think you texted Mike Lasker, or the VFX soup, of this film a couple nights ago after walking out of the screening. And we were like in the throes of trying to finish the final, final version of the film. And he read it to all of us. And it put some wind in our spinnaker. So thank you very much. But it was a big <laughs> challenge. Obviously, the first film was uh, was beloved and 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 was innovative and, and changed uh, things and we didn't want to follow up with a sequel that was just more of the same because we wanted to give the audience the same sense of surprise and delight and go on a, on, on a new emotional uh, journey with Miles and so we knew we had to do something special and something new and the, the pressure that we felt the entire crew felt as well and everyone wanted to take what we learned making the first movie and build on that to do something wholly uh, original and uh, and so that's why it took so long. It took us four and a half years to, to get this thing done because it's such an ambitious movie that's trying to be something you've never seen before, trying to amaze uh, from a visual cinematic language, but also to be really compelling on a, on a, on a story level as well. Uh, and it took a lot of really smart people working really hard for a very long time to pull it off. <laughs> well, it was worth the wait, and I can't wait for the next one. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Angela, you're up next. Hi guys, congratulations. I absolutely love the film. You guys killed it yet again. Oh, um, thank you. I wanted to talk about where you draw your inspiration from. There were so many layers and complexities, yet the transitions were seamless. So how, how do you guys come up with this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard a good answer to <laughs> right. that question. We talk a lot, uh, and we talk a lot about like what is a good. You know, we, it started with trying to find a, a, a way for the first movie. What felt like Miles going from a, a boy to a teenager, and this one was sort of him going from a teenager to a man. And we talked a lot about how parents and their children uh, both need to grow up uh, as their uh, relationship evolves as they get older, and it gets more complicated. Uh, as we all know, I'm a parent uh, of two. Uh, of a 14 and 10 year old, and you know they're uh, they're it's getting more complicated as it goes, uh, and and you have to you know you just, what you're doing when they're two is very different from what you're doing when they're a teenager, um, and so that became a really important theme that we ended up weaving in through all of the storylines. This you know Gwen and her father, you know uh, Peter B being a new dad, Jess having a, a mom to be. Every all the stories were surrounding parents and children and 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 different perspectives on what that relationship can be and and should be. Ashley, you're up next. Hey guys, it was absolutely phenomenal. I didn't think you could touch the first one, let alone top it, but yet here we are. I walked out of the theater just like I had no words. I was so excited for it. Um, so I caught, I mean, there's so many Easter eggs and cameos and callbacks and not just animated ones and comic book ones, but live action ones. Do you have a favorite or one that you're more excited for fans to see than another? I'm, tr we're tr I'm trying to not spoil things. Yes. We do want to make sure that the, the audience is not as spoiled, uh, and has the same level of surprise that, that you all got to have. Well, one fun fact is that our friend Taryn mm -hmm. uh, gets to play a web slinger um, along with uh, a Widow, uh, the, his, uh, his um, the, uh, cowboy. mayor. Yeah, this is Taryn Killam, uh, <laughs> who, uh, the actor from Saturday Night Live who also writes the web slinger comics. Uh, he got to voice uh, him. That's a really and he's point. our old friend uh, uh, ever since the How I Met Your Mother days. So that was a real treat. 
Um, there's a bunch of delightful uh, cameos that we really can't sp- spoil, but... Um, there's also Metro Boomin. That's right. Who makes his um, uh, animated acting debut in this film. Yes. And, and also is responsible for the beautiful uh, soundtrack that uh, I think it really uh, captures the feelings of the, of the film really well. Yeah, no, I loved it. I loved all of it. I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> Me too. Diane, you <laughs> have know the next question. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane from Three Decades, Three Kids. I absolutely loved the movie. I loved it. I didn't want it to end. I just, I was like, when it said to be continued, I was like, okay, let's do that right now. <laughs> um, I have been like, Spider Manning forever because I've been a mom for 30 years. <laughs> so we have had every Spider Man character <laughs> imaginable to man in our house. <laughs> but I re- you really pulled it off. I absolutely loved it. What I wanted to know was what parts were like, I don't want to say your favorite, but like what parts really hit home with you? Mm you know, as, uh, just, like, personally. You know, I think the, the, the scene with Miles and his mom uh, on the rooftop always gets me choked up, and Phil uh, wrote uh, most of that scene, uh, and, like, uh, I always think it's really a really beautiful uh, thing that's really sums up the themes of the movie, and... Uh, it it yeah. came from something that... Um, uh, uh, a friend of mine told me once, which is she had a, a phonograph in her um, room of her as a, 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 y- a very young girl. And her mother was a very, um, uh, a very tough customer from uh, Zaragoza, Spain. She said when she moved into the apartment, she pointed at the picture of the little girl and said, you have to take care of that little girl for me. <laughs> and then she said, and that little girl deserves to live in a clean room. <laughs> so clean up your room. <laughs> and I just thought that was such a beautiful thought that mm-hmm. you are, that, that, that a parent and their adult child are co-parenting this young person that still walks this earth, that now mm-hmm. you have to share this responsibility with me. You owe it to me to take care of yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought that was such an incredible thought uh, that when I was desperate <laughs> for how to write this scene, uh, I drew upon that. It, it, it was beautiful. I mean, I, it hit me too. When I saw it, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much, and congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to bring the family to see it. Oh, nice. Lorena, you. you have the next question. Hi, I'm Lorena from Alvarez Adventures. Just to echo everyone else, it's amazing. It was great. And the three things that stood out to me the most were, number one, the diversity as a Latina. I loved seeing so many different people, colors. That was amazing. Number two was the message of family. I'm also a mom of a 10 and a 14 year old. All right, (laughs) you know. (laughs) And they're both boys. So that scene on the roof, oh my goodness, my heart was just like, (laughs) ah. And that message that you just shared was beautiful. I I love that. And And the third one was the amazing comic style graphics. That was so cool. I loved all the colors and the way that the emotions were coming through with the colors. It was just so beautiful to look at. So my question is, what was the message that was most important for you to get across to your viewers? I, I mean, I think when you add those things up together, you know, it's the, the value of any individual and their specific... Um, way that they are and the way that they choose to live has so much importance. And I, every, every step of this movie, we're trying to express the critical importance of a single um, uh, uh, human creative thought. So every universe 
looks like a different kind of comic book. Every character appears to be drawn by and designed by a singular artist. You know, an early title for the very first Spider-Man movie was, that, which was never going to work, was The Singular Spider-Man. <laughs> Meaning the, like, each one of us is unique and that uniqueness is critical to the, the larger group. And so that falling into line is actually not what we're supposed to do. We're actually, the fact that, like, you know, each of these characters are standing next to each other and they're all drawn differently and they all have different experiences and yet they are trying to form a team. That is really beautiful to us. Right. So I, I, another moment from the film that always gets me kind of choked up is when uh, Spider-Man Punk, who sort of is, you think is going to be sort of an antagonist to Miles, ends up being like a real ally to him. And... Uh, and the the power of these people coming from different worlds and different perspectives, but that they can help each other uh, uh, be better people is uh, is you know the thing you gotta hope for for the future. Yeah, that was beautiful. Good job on that, <laughs> Michael. You have the next question. Hi. Uh, well, I saw the movie and I really liked it. Um, it was so emotional just to watch everything play out the way it did. Um, but my question is more about um, the biracial component of Miles Morales and Miguel O'Hara because they do these great, amazing superhero things and they have their own unique powers, but also they embrace their biracial um, identity as well. So what, how, how can their presence of sorts send a message to those who are also biracial but also struggling with the fact that sometimes they hear they're not enough of this one or they're not mm. enough of that? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, that's like what's so um, interesting to write about when you're, when, when you're trying to write about Miles, right? And uh, I can only relate to this to some degree, which is that like, I'm a Cuban American with an American father and, and, and um, I don't speak Spanish as well <laughs> as uh, most of the people that I grew up with in Miami because we speak English in our house. Um, and, and so, but I also am, don't want 100%, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, I'm not the same as, as uh, the kids who with two American parents. So it's very like, to me, that's a very interesting place for a character to be because they're in a liminal state in between two things and, and in between categories. And it's just another way of saying that like each of us is, you know, an individual. And we have different influences. And there's no monolithic culture. Even within any culture, there are subcultures and different, um, um, you know, you go to any city in any place in the world, and you're going to hear different languages being spoken. Um, and so there's no place that just feels like one pure thing. And the fact that everybody on some level feels like they have all these different influences in them is something that uh, I think that everyone can relate to. And, and to categorize or standardize a person is absurd. <laughs> we all have right? lots of influences. So, yeah, and the other course. thing that we like attempt to do with the movie is just do the very, very simple thing of having people be represented in the movie. <laughs> and not to make it something weird. Right. Right. And right. not to make the yeah. story like about that, about how like unusual that is, but rather to make it seem like ubiquitous and simple. So people speak Spanish in this movie the way that we all hear Spanish, like, you know, walking down the street, you know, that it's like it's ubiquitous. It's simple. It's easy. It's present. And it's not like no people don't have to like stop and go, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> right. Wait, your last name is O'Hara? Like, that's strange. Like, you know what I mean? You just no, yeah, try to, like, exactly. have it just be simple. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, please say your goodbyes and exit the Zoom room. All right. Thank thanks. you very so much, you guys. Oh, thank you. We thank really you appreciate it. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Wonderful and JPL, let's cut, too, please. <laughs>